Hello, my name's Mel, welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, it's all about self-built camper vans and camper van related stuff. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now, talking about subscribers to my channel, my channel has suddenly seen a massive burst of subscribers. It doesn't seem that long ago I was at 20,000 and I'm now at 23,200 odd. So thank you to all my new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. And I can't thank you enough for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Because without you guys, none of this would be possible. I would be driving a truck for a living rather than making these videos so thank you i do really appreciate it so today's wednesday so this is waffle on a wednesday where i answer your questions to the best of my ability but before i do that i want to respond to some of the comments that i've got over the last couple of weeks some of those comments are quite oh, a bit like sticking a knife in and twisting it and pulling it out again have a listen to this unbelievable when i made my filter coffee video now, I really wanted to try and help some people out and show them a decent way to make a decent cup of coffee in their van without making any mess. That was the whole premise of that video. And I did not expect to get so many people get on their high horse and have a go at me about polluting the environment. What they're talking about are these pods. Now, apparently, these coffee pods are really bad for the environment. Bear in mind, I live in a camper van. I produce my own electricity. When I drive my van, the byproduct of me driving is actually generating electricity. On my roof, I have solar panels. Therefore, I'm not producing any carbon emissions purely to produce electricity. I generate my own electricity. So I think you can probably forgive me for throwing a few of these in the bin. But that aside, I was quite horrified by some of the statistics that somebody sent me. But here's the thing, after that reading that comment, I did do some research. I went online, did my own Googling, had a little look, and they are in fact recyclable. They, you can recycle these. All you've got to do once you've used them is break the seal, Pop the coffee out, you can compost the coffee and the shell of this coffee pod can go in the recycling bin, whether it be aluminium or plastic. And the coffee pods go in the little green bin that's out there, literally just outside the window, straight in the bin, straight into the recycling. Along with everything else that I can recycle, I am conscious, um, I do recycle as much stuff as I can. Yeah, don't shoot me for that. <laughs> because I do do my bit, believe me. Now, whilst on the subject of my coffee machine, I want to say thank you to everybody. Quite a few people actually suggested that I use a desk tidy pencil case holder type thing, and I've got one. And that's exactly what that is there. So thank you to all those people that suggested I use a desk tidy to hold this in, and it does stay there. And when I drive my van, it doesn't fall out. So I'm quite pleased with that. So thank you very much to all those people that suggested using a desk tidy to hold my coffee machine. Now I'd like to give you a little update on my barbecue. It is fantastic. I've used it a couple of times since making that video Friday. I actually made that video um, about two weeks ago and I have used that barbecue since then and it's still as easy to clean today as it ever was and I'm 100% satisfied with that barbecue. Can't recommend it enough. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll stick a link to it up there. So thank you Streetwise. Brilliant bit of kit. Now let's get on with some questions, shall we? <laughs> let's put that list down there. I'm gonna answer this question first. And it's a question that's been asked for the last two, maybe three years after all my channel is almost four years now. And that is people have been asking me, when am I going to create some kind of brand? When are you gonna be able to buy t-shirts with my logo on it or stickers even so the last year i've been working on a logo and those of you that are following me on instagram would have already seen my logo i should have got it out of the cupboard ready shouldn't i didn't really think this through anyway <laughs> here is my new logo well this is going to be the logo for my website anyway so there you go Big van, small world. I'm going, I am in the process of creating a website with this name of this, with this brand, as it were. Um, and on that website, I will try and put as much information, as much advice as I possibly can 
all the stuff that I've learned over the years of building camper vans, living in camper vans, using camper vans, will all be on that website, including all the measurements for my van, because I do get asked quite often, what size are my cupboards? What wood did I use? What size timber did I use? And that is gonna be all available on my website. I'm going to try and create actual plans, like drawn plans of everything, all the furniture in my van. So for those people that keep asking those questions, they can then go to that website and they can see everything for themselves. All the specifications, all the gadgets, everything is gonna be on my website. It is work in progress though. Like I say, I'm still working on it. I haven't launched the website just yet, but if you're interested in buying a t-shirt with my new logo on it, there you go. All down the bottom in the, uh, underneath every video, you'll see um, links to where you can get these t-shirts and stickers now the stickers these are the stickers that i've created with this logo and i've got to say thank you to rebecca for helping me create this logo and organize these stickers you can buy these stickers down below but they are quite expensive to post out and thank you to helen from my world my way for pointing out the postage cost of these i didn't realize they were two pound 99 to post out so for that reason i've trying to outsource where I can buy some of these stickers and you can buy these directly off of me through my website, hopefully, if I can organise it. Now, whether or not I changed my YouTube channel name, I'm still undecided. I'll, I'll probably stick to Mel's Van Life for now and maybe in the future I will change my YouTube channel to Big Van Small World. But um, not until everyone's kind of got used to that name. You'll see the little picture change very soon it's taken a whole year to sort this out so i hope you like it please do leave a comment in the comment section of this video a lot of work's gone into this i know it don't look much but for me it's a big deal <laughs> right questions where's the best place to fit my safety alarms smoke detector etc well the best place to fit a smoke alarm um, is it as far away from your cooker as possible? So your gas, your LPG alarm down on the floor, smoke alarm, CO alarm up high. Also, talking about smoke alarms, one bit of advice I could give everyone, well, one bit of advice I'd like to offer everyone is that when you have your smoke alarm, wherever you fit it in your van, always try and put a fire extinguisher next to your smoke alarm. I covered this in a previous video when I had my transit. I had my smoke alarm up in the corner above the door and a fire extinguisher not right next to it and the, the idea behind was behind that was that if i have the smoke alarm by the door if, when the smoke alarm goes off your eyes are drawn to the smoke alarm so the first thing you're going to look at is your actual smoke alarm and if your fire extinguisher is next to your smoke alarm it's you're already looking in that direction so you can grab your fire extinguisher if you need to Hopefully that never happens. And also, if your smoke alarm is by your door, like the exit, you're already facing and looking in that direction as well. So if there is a fire, you can go straight to that, grab your fire extinguisher and open the door and get out if you can, if you have to, if need be. That's probably the best bit of advice I can give anyone asking about where to put your smoke alarm. Put it by your door, right next to your fire extinguisher. Now, carrying on with the theme of safety, always if you break down or if you're forced to pull over to the side of the road point your steering wheel if you're able to into the curb if you're in the uk this side if you're abroad it'll be that side but always when you pull over especially on a motorway on a yeah on a, or on a dual carriageway if you are forced to pull over make sure you put your lock on towards the curb that way if anybody does hit you from behind your vehicle is going to go into the curb it's going to be forced the steering's already pointing that way it's going to go into the curb if you park and you leave your steering wheel pointing straight or slightly out to the other way if someone hits you from behind your vehicle is going to be forced into oncoming traffic and that could be pretty disastrous for cars coming in the other direction yeah and get out of the car especially if it's on the motorway it's these so-called smart motorways and just sit well away from it and wait for emergency services to come and get you because apparently if you're on a smart motorway they've got cameras and they know where you are what is your evening routine when parking up at night if you're out and about so if you're out stealth camping and you want to get ready for bed at night the best thing you can do is have your evening meal and your evening routine in a separate spot to where you're going to go and park especially if you're parking somewhere urban like in a street with houses down each side what you want to do is be ready for bed before you get there so when you find somewhere to park you can 
pull in, park your van, switch your lights off, shut all your curtains, get into bed. You know no one's going to take any notice of you that way. If you start messing around at night, once you've parked up, then people know you're in the van. Morning routine, just the same as anyone else. Just get up in the morning, make your coffee, get dressed. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, morning routine's completely different. What's your favorite van life item? Good question, my favorite van life item. My camera. <laughs> yeah, because with my camera, I can make these videos. So my favorite item in my van has got to be my camera. And talking of cameras, at the moment, I'm using a GoPro Hero 9. Picture quality is quite good, I think. Sound quality is quite good, but it does have its weaknesses when I'm inside the van. Like when in a darkened area, you might see, if you look closely at your screen, you might see little tiny white spots here and there, all over the place. <laughs> Those white spots are called noise, and it's because it's got a small sensor on this camera. It's only got a tiny little sensor, but if I get a better camera with a bigger sensor, then you won't get so much um, white noise. I think that's what they call it. So there you are, if you like this video, do give me the thumbs up. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. And by subscribing to my channel, you'll encourage me to make better videos. Thanks for watching. Ta-da for now.